Hello, everybody. This is Pamela. And this is Tracy. And we are here to discuss how business really works. In today's show, we're going to answer another question. This one is, how many goals should you be going after at once in your business? And what's a realistic time frame for completing those goals? Well, here's a simple answer. You should go after as many goals as it takes to achieve your vision, but you should only be working on one of those goals at a time. So Tracy and I have devised a really good visualization exercise. It's a great experiment for you to do. What you're going to do is take eight eight ounce cups, so eight cups of eight ounces each, and label each one with one of your goals. Next, you're going to take a pitcher of water and put one ounce of water in each cup. So the one ounce of water represents one hour of work you did toward each goal today or one hour per goal a week, depending on your available time to work on all of your goals together. Tomorrow, you're gonna add another ounce of water to each cup. And you continue like this for eight days until all the cups are filled, meaning all of your goals are complete. Well, great. You accomplished all eight goals on the same day, the same week, the same month, at some point in the future. Yes, but let's try this experiment a little bit different way. Take the eight cups and the pitcher of water, but today just fill one cup with water. Well, congratulations. You completed a goal. Yep, and tomorrow you fill the second cup with water. Hey, congratulations. You just completed another goal. (laughs) And so you can continue this for eight days until all the cups are filled. So notice that it still took the same amount of time to complete all of the goals. Or did it? Maybe not. That's right. Actually, that's not true at all. Due to a thing known as the human context switching. This is the time it takes your brain to return to the same efficiency, productivity, and creativity that it was at when you quit your task previously. This latency time is affected by a couple things. One, the complexity of the task, the time since you worked on it previously, and the amount of other brain function complexities that you performed since the last time you worked on this task. So psychologists have run experiments that show that at a minimum it's 25 minutes to reach efficiency when returning to a task. Wow. 25 minutes. Wow. Now add that to the time. It might take you to get your resources together to work on the project, blah, blah. You can see why this really kills your productivity. Mm -hmm. So let's say this morning you get out the resources you need to work on project one and you work on it for an hour. Then you put away those resources and you get out the resources you need to work on project two and you work on that for an hour. But it actually took you 25 minutes to completely get project one out of your mind and get efficiently and effectively into project two. So you really only accomplished 35 to 45 minutes of work on project two. Now let's change again. This is why you are not productive when you're working on multiple goals at once. And I just want to make an observation here because this brings to mind a rather dangerous habit that a lot of people have, and that is texting and driving. I have done it, I will admit. I I don't do it anymore because I've never had a crash, thank God, but I keep hearing about people that do. But what I noticed when I was texting and driving is that even though I would look back at the road in plenty of time and I wouldn't get in any accidents, it still took my brain a minute to adjust back to what's happening in the road. My adjustment wasn't instantaneous. It took me, you know, maybe not a full minute, but at least five, maybe 10 seconds to adjust what was going on in the road ahead of me. This is all in a compressed time frame, So, you know, we're not talking a day or a week or so on. But when you're driving at 60 miles an hour, you take your attention away and then you put it back on the road, but you've still got that latency time to adjust back to what's happening on the road. That can be a very dangerous combination. And that is why everyone says don't text and drive. And I stopped doing it too, because I'm like, I can't keep playing with my life and other people's lives this way. This is not good. So it just reminds me of that switch that my brain used to try and make when I would fall into that bad habit and why it's such a bad habit. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What do you think of that example? And you actually had um, a part in your last question. What's a realistic time frame for getting these goals done, for completing all of your goals? 
Yeah. Well, I think it's actually a good example as far as like a split second you understanding latency. And I think it's really common if you are like texting something a little bit long and you text a little bit, you look up, you text a little bit, you look up. If you'll pay attention, you'll realize my brain is not really on what's happening in front of me. It's still on that text. Yes. The brain has a latency. We're the smartest creatures on earth, but our brain still has latency. Mm-hmm. Now, what's a realistic time frame for completing the goal? <laughs> I can't answer that. Sorry. I really can't. <laughs> Only the person whose goal it is can. So be realistic and determine the number of hours, days, weeks it would take to complete that goal if that's all you had to do other than eat and sleep. Um, how many tasks would be required? How many other people are involved in completing this goal? What resources are required and do you still have to gather them? Just break that goal into action steps and put a timetable on it. Now look at your life. How many hours per day or week are you free to work on this goal? Are you working 40 plus hours a week in order to pay your bills on some other job? And I don't necessarily mean a job working for a paycheck, If you are self-employed and you do the work that generates revenue, then you have a job that requires your time. But if you're not working your job, then no revenue is coming in. So what you have to do is you have to block out your revenue generating time. You have to block out the time that your relationships and personal responsibilities you take. You have to block out the time for the personal activities that you're not willing to forego to achieve this goal. You know, I'm not going to give up taking a shower. I might give up Mm -hmm. watching a TV show. I'm not going to give up time with my husband, but I might give up some of my reading time, a lot of some of my recreational time. I'm still going to exercise, but I might not, you know, go play with the girls, you know, go play tennis or whatever. I probably will pare it down and really concentrate on my goals, but you're never going to just put 100% into goals. Life still happens. Mm-hmm. So, next, you now know how long this goal would take if that's the only thing you were doing. You know how many hours it's going to take to accomplish it. You now have blocked out the time that's not available to work on it. So, now you actually know how long this is going to take. So, next, look at how much control you have to like chunk hours of free time together. The more time that you can work on the project at one sitting, the less latency time you're going to have to adjust for. Yeah, but remember to take breaks. I think taking breaks is so important, and a lot of people overlook how important this is. You lose your efficiency when you're working after about 25 minutes without a break. So don't do other tasks that change your brain activity. Just go drink some water, go to the bathroom, stretch, take your dog for a walk, and then get back to the task at hand. Also... Don't let the lack of a chunk of hours stop you from working on a goal. Any time is good time. Any time is better than no time at all. So if it's a question of, I can choose to work on my goal for 30 minutes or not at all, choose the 30 minutes. Forward progress will keep you motivated, even if it's not the ideal amount of time you want to have to achieve that goal that day. Yeah, so I guess my best answer to the part of the question that's, uh, what's a realistic time frame to complete your goal, is that you've got to figure that out. By breaking that goal up into actionable tasks, determining how long that will take to do each of those tasks, and then scheduling them into your life. Now, you have an action plan, and you know when the goal will be complete. And remember, a goal is not reality until the plan is in place to achieve it. Without a plan, it's just a wish. Yeah, I agree. And if you are at all like me and you are allergic to planning, I just implore you to start small. Like we discussed in episode 22, when we were talking about keeping focus, you don't have to come up with an elaborate plan right away. Just just make a plan for tomorrow. And once you've got that down, make a plan for the upcoming week. So just start in small, manageable doses. Um, I mentioned in last episode that Tracy's plan for everything she's got going, it just kind of gave me chills. But really, when you break it down, it's not difficult to put into place and it helps you get things done. It's just getting over that initial resistance, that initial allergic reaction that you may have, but giving it a chance anyway, because it really will work for you and it will help you achieve your goals. 
Yeah, and I know you're overwhelmed by my planning, but I'm going to tell you what. I accomplish about twice as much now than I did before I adopted this Mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. And things don't slip through the cracks like they used to. Yes. But Pam's right. If this just seems overwhelming to you, start small. Plan out the next two weeks. But when you do, keep the big picture in mind. What's the real goal? And every task that goes on that plan, ask yourself, how does this help me achieve my long-term goal? Mm -hmm. So our question for you is, how many goals do you have? And are they planned out and scheduled? Head on over to HowBusinessReallyWorks.com and answer that question in the comments to this episode. Or if you'd like to keep it personal, you can always contact us through the contact page and answer the question there. Yeah, we would love to hear from you. And please like this episode and share this episode, especially if you have found it valuable and helpful for you. And if you are listening in iTunes to the podcast, please go ahead and give us a review. We would really appreciate it. It means so much to us to hear your feedback and hear what you think about the show And giving us a review and giving us some stars will help us be found in iTunes, which will then help us to help more people just like yourself to succeed in their entrepreneurial goals. So please like, share, give us a review, and we will see you on the next one. See you next time. Bye-bye.